welcome to the Natural Health Podcast, where we bring awareness of sustainable health in the business hustle space. Natural Health Podcast is perfect for the high-performing business-minded individuals who want to work with their biochemistry to achieve success and optimal health. It's Friday, which means it's time for friends sharing facts about health, business, and overall success. In today's episode, we talk to Audrey Lee. Audrey has spent the past seven years educating researching and practicing aromatherapy and loves utilizing essential oils to help people rediscover emotional and hormonal balance. During this time, she's traveled extensively to receive training from incredible, skilled and knowledgeable people in the field, as well as experience firsthand the art of science behind behind harnessing a mother's nature's energy. She's moved to Melbourne three years ago and collaborates with many practitioners and leaders in the holistic field locally and internationally, supporting and strengthening the modalities with essential oils. Audrey is a certified aromatherapist, aroma freedom technique practitioner, personal coach, certified crystal practitioner, and is absolutely passionate about educating and empowering others with nature's toolbox, which she has used on herself to keep her mind body and spirit in a state of balance. Some interesting facts about Audrey are that she loves snowboarding and she also loves playing with jewelry, design and crafting. She's also lived in Singapore for 12 years and in Dallas, Texas for eight years and loves adventuring. Welcome to the Natural Health Podcast, Audrey. Thank you, Mahela, for having me. I'm so excited. (laughs) I am so excited to have you here. So Dallas, Texas, wow, for eight years. Tell us a little bit about that. Was that Wild Wild West or what? No, it's actually really metropolitan. It's amazing. And it's such a melting pot of people from all over the world. So nothing like you would imagine um, Texas to be, actually. I mean, there are small towns out and about and um, a lot of um, stereotypical things you would expect to find. But Dallas itself is a beautiful city. Very yeah. metropolitan. Wow. Yeah. And you've traveled everywhere. So you've you've oh. gone to Singapore, you've lived in Texas, now Melbourne. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. My son, he's so international. He's so adaptable to change. Um, but when I was born, my dad said he looked at my face because he's in like, you know, facial, um, you know, profiling, so to speak, in um, traditional Chinese ways of um, looking at fortune and things like that, really fun traditional stuff like that. And he said, yep, this girl, she's not going to stay put. (laughs) So I don't know if it's self-fulfilling for him to tell me that. (laughs) <laughs> I love that. That's absolutely amazing. Wow. I love, I love your, you know, your travel history and experience. Absolutely amazing. Um, look, I would love to know, to get to know you a little bit more before we go into and talk about stress and essential oils, because what an amazing topic, um, how you can manage your stress with essential oils. But before we get into that, let's find out who Audrey is. So what yeah. what have been the key turning points in your life to get you to where you are now? I mean, I know talking about your bio and a bit about where you've traveled. Are there any other key turning mm. points to make you be like, you know what, I'm going to do aromatherapy and this is for me? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, one of, one of two, actually, there's two very big key turning points in my life that led me down this track. Um, I certainly didn't grow up thinking I was going to be doing aromatherapy. Um, but 11 years ago, my mum got really sick and um, lost her life. And that was a huge key turning point for me. And back then, I wasn't aware that there were alternative options available to us. And I wish I had known of all these things that could have helped her support her emotionally and her stress levels. Um, And then there's also my son when he was really young. I have one son, he's now 13, but when he was five or four years old, being a boy, he was either getting sick or he was having a lot of mishaps. And so being a first time mom, I was constantly in panic mode, stressed, overwhelmed with everything that's going on and, and, and just in fight or flight mode a lot. So when the oils kind of fell into my lap, it, to me, it just signaled, like I knew intuitively that, hang on, there could be something in this. 
because I grew up in Australia in a rural town and I was out in the in nature a lot. And actually being in Australia, we're always exposed to like tea tree and eucalyptus and lavender and all those basic ones. And we know that it evokes really good emotions. So innately, I knew that Mother Nature was the answer. Um, and And when I started dabbling with the oils, there were some epiphany moments that I had that was like, whoa, what on earth is this? You know, hang on a second. That happened really quickly. Like the changes happened really, really quickly, physically, emotionally, and mentally. Like brain fog went away, um, skin regenerated. Um, and then I was like, hmm, okay, I'm going to dive a little deeper into this. And, you know, fast forward to today, seven years later, not only am I just more emotionally balanced and because of that, my hormones are balanced, right? Because those actually go hand in hand. Um, I have less stress. I have a lot more confidence that I can now be on a podcast. <laughs> um, and, and basically, yeah, thousands of people um, I get to teach around the world on how to benefit from the oils. So it's been life changing. Yeah, wow. Is. It's interesting when things are made or meant for us, exactly the thing that you said is they land on our lap and you saw so many changes just happen so quickly that you weren't even sure how it happened or why it happened. No. And then you were just like, wow, I'm going to, did you study? Did you start studying it then or what happened? Yeah, it really um, piqued my interest because I couldn't believe the vast changes that were happening in such a short amount of time some of things were overnight some things you kind of notice it happens subtly over time and then you look back and go oh wow hmm i have really good memory now or oh where did that scar disappear to you know things like that you don't notice but it happens subtly over a period of time and that really got me interested like what else what else do i want to learn about these magical essences from mother nature yeah yeah i love that magical essences from mother nature i absolutely love that <laughs> so i guess you know every if everything that's happened in your life you know with your mum passing away uh with your son being totally a stressed out mother where you're like oh my gosh is he falling what is happening i want to help yeah. him you know you yeah. found it's, uh, mother nature's oils to help you out with that so i guess you know uh, health and success may have looked different for you back then oh yeah what yeah what does it look like for you right now health <laughs> in one sense optimal health mm -hmm. and then success in another sense what what do they look like for you right now or dream yeah well even before i jump into that the contrast of my life before oils was to me success meant pursuing and being successful materialistically or financially, like that's where we grew up thinking what success was, especially in a very traditional Asian Chinese family. Um, and I was constantly pursuing that, chasing that dream and pretending to be someone or to look a certain way. To me, that's what I thought success meant. To me, I thought success meant ticking lots of things off the box and getting things done in the day and going, oh, look at that, I achieved so much. But now, now that I have the oils in my life and I've been using aromatherapy for so long, um, it's really made me become a lot more present to what is really important in my life. And I'm a lot less in my own head. And so what I pursue has a lot less to do with my own selfish needs. Like now when I share the oils or teach people how to have breakthrough results with them, what I get in return is and a feeling, a feeling that I just can't, I've never experienced that before oils. It's like a gratitude and appreciation um, an exchange of energy from other people when they have these breakthrough moments. And there's no words to describe how that feels when they come to me and say, oh my gosh, Audrey, thank you so much. You've changed my life or you've, you know, now we, this is happening in my life and, and my son is sleeping through the night or I'm not as stressed, you know, or, oh my gosh, I achieved this 
this um, goal because I managed to get over this emotional block. Thank you, Audrey. So to me, it was, it's now about sharing this passion of mine and helping people experience what it feels to be, to feel good. Um, so to me, it's, it's a win, win, win all around. To me, that's what makes me feel good. And I associate that feeling now um, with what success means to me. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What, a, what a beautiful definition that, you know, success and optimal health for you is, you know, giving back um, and, and, and assisting individuals with these oils uh, because they may have not have access to them or may not have known how to use them and you utilizing your knowledge and being like, you know what, I'm going to help you do that. And that's success and health to me. That's absolutely amazing. And that's, you know, um, selfless. And I love that. I absolutely love that. Um, Thank you. Let's let's start talking about these oils because we know that people are here. They're like essential oils. I want to know more about it and stress, like <laughs> with everything that's happening around us. I mean, who's not stressed? Uh, stress mm-hmm. is being the word's been thrown around left, right, and center. We all feel Absolutely. that little bit stressed out here and there, especially with what's happening here in Melbourne, all around the world. Us caring about people, uh, so. So managing your stress with three essential oils to start off and, you know, let's start with the basics that individuals who are listening yeah. don't really know what essential oils are. Are you able to let us know what they are and also aromatherapy with, with the basics of them? Yeah, that's a really good question, Mahela. Um, you know, a lot of people think essential oils are a new age bad thing, but the fact of the matter is they've been around for as long as plants have been around. So they have been created by plants as secondary metabolites to protect the species to, um, it's basically production of the basic processes and, but yet it is so critical to the survival of the plant. And they use this to attract pollinators, to protect themselves from predators um, or attack, to self heal whenever they're injured. Um, They also use it to protect their living domain below the soil and above the soil and also to communicate with other plant species so that they can coexist together peacefully and also kind of like a neighborhood watch, like you look out for me and I'll look out for you sort of thing. So it's really cool. Um, But yeah, so what they do is whatever they do for plants, they actually have the potential to benefit us in, in a similar way. Um, because humans and and plants have coexisted for, for since the beginning um, of time, but if you go out there, Mahela, and and you have a peppermint bush, and you go and and rub the leaves of the peppermint and smell that, that's actually what essential oils are. So it's pretty amazing. But like I said before, growing up around nature kind of gives you that innate knowing that. There's something about nature or walking in the woods that makes you feel really good. Um, Sorry, (laughs) interruption. And so, yeah, so I rediscovered these about seven years ago and it just was interesting how the oils started, you know, having a little bit of fun in my body and I realised that, yeah, there's more to this. And what I discovered was... um, they're also very powerful vibrational therapy. And so this is an amazing book that I love to learn from by Dr. Richard Gerber. He wrote this book, Vibrational Therapy. And if you're interested in learning more about vibration and how essential oils carry a vibrational field of frequency, you can actually leverage on that knowledge and help to raise your own frequency to entrain with nature it's sort of like even animals, you know, and everything in Mother Nature has a frequency that is really healthy, like negative ions. And so the oils have that ability to work with your body and raise it the level of frequency in your body. That's amazing. So That's I so love mind it. blowing. I love that. Yeah. And you said when you go to your garden and you rub the mint, it's interesting because um I actually just started my garden back again because we moved. And I put a few different mints and I've got that chocolate mint, right? I don't know if you know about it. You rub the mint and it smells like chocolate. And then there's what? This, <laughs> this other plant that you just touch and like you smell it and it's like pineapple. It's crazy. Wow. Yeah, it's so these are the essential oils, like you said, and they make you feel like when you when I go into my garden, or like you said, when you go into the forest, wow, like you just get that 
Huh. Yeah. That Zen feeling, don't you? Yeah. I mean, that's why a lot of doctors around the world, I know in Europe especially, they're prescribing nature to help people feel better instead of prescribing synthetic man-made compounds. So uh, it's it's really definitely um, opening up the doors to yeah receiving natural therapy, to getting to the root um, of the problem as opposed to treating the symptoms. And this is what we're going into today about stress. Yeah. Yeah. So with the yes. essential oil, so if we just get any plant, for example, so mm. can we extract essential oils from all plants or is it just some specific plants? Yeah. I mean, it's not all plants um, have essential oils that can be extracted or distilled for us to use, but there's definitely a lot of them. There's thousands of them out there. Um, yeah. So some of them are, can be toxic, you know, that's why they don't make them into oils or some of them just haven't been discovered yet. So uh, I've been really lucky to learn about new discoveries that of new plant botanicals. And a lot of that has to do with people, pioneers, ex- um, people that are interested in exploring and discovering untapped or untouched territory. So yeah, it's amazing what could be right out there under our noses that we haven't actually extracted or distilled into an oil yet that can actually be very beneficial. Yeah, a hundred percent. And it's and it's so interesting because there's so many individuals, like you know, native natives to a country or or, or an area, yeah. and they'll say like, oh, you know, this herb or this flower is good for this. And you ask them how, and they're like, well, we don't know. We've just been using for a hundred <laughs> years, and it's helped with yeah. headaches. And then, for example, if a scientist comes or someone like you, or you know, and looks into it and goes, wow, this is why it's because it's this constant constitute that was in there, the secondary metabolite for this or that, and the plant assisted with, and yeah. it's just mind blowing how it's been there yes. for ages like yes. said, essential oils aren't new no but it's very difficult to distill the full complete fingerprint and profile of the plant which is why maybe that's why there's limited number of oils i mean there's still a few hundred available on the market more than enough we, that we need for our toolbox um but yes it's a very tedious process to make sure the complete profile of the plant is kept the integrity is intact um and there's a lot of um it's a science and an art really yeah yeah it's so beautiful that's absolutely amazing so what does an, an aromatherapist do now that we know what essential oils are if someone goes yeah. I'm, I'm seeing an aromatherapist it's like what is that <laughs> yeah well it's someone like me who teaches you how to use oils safely and how to get the most optimal use out of an oil um we look at the just lifestyle the lifestyle that you have and the issues or challenges that you're going through. And I'm like, yeah, girl, you need this. <laughs> and I walk them through that. I give them the basics. I teach them everything they need to know about how to apply them safely and use them safely in your family. They're not hard to use, honestly. But, um, yeah, so just even comes down to um, massage therapy as well. So essential oils, aromatherapy, there are different ways to use the oils. So it can be through the process of inhalation, um, topical use, and even the more controversial um, ingesting of essential oils, which actually uh, has been done for centuries in Europe, so long as you're doing it you know, safely with the right oils, with pure unadulterated oils. Um, it's actually been used for a long, long time that way. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's so interesting. I love that. Um, so let's get into and talk about stress. Uh, like yeah. I said, it's everywhere, right? And yeah. the, the individuals listening might be like, what? I can use essential oils to help my stress. That It just doesn't make Absolutely. sense. It's not something that we're taught. It's not something that we grab in our toolbox. Like you said, it's not something that we have available just here and there that we just go, oh, I've got mm-hmm. a headache. I'm just going to get that. Oh, I'm, I'm really stressed out. I can't sleep. I'm going to get that. Yeah. So, let's talk about today's topic, um, you know, managing stress and essential oils. So how do actually essential oils assist with managing stress? And, and uh, what are stress-reducing benefits of aromatherapy? So I guess we'll answer the first question first is, can essential oils, and if so, how do they actually assist with stress? Yeah, it's a big topic. <laughs> but you know what? What I want to say is stress, that stress doesn't really exist in the world. There is no stress out there. Stress actually exists in our mind. <laughs> honestly so it is all about um accessing starting at the level of the brain 
and accessing the emotions or the triggers that we have that create the stress in our lives. Um, and you know how they say, you know, it's not, it's not, uh, it's what happens, not what, what, what's the saying, but it's um, something it's, like it's, it's, it's not, not what happens to us. It's how we deal with it, something like that, is it? Something like that. Like it's what's going on in our environment. <laughs> we totally butchered that. Right? Yeah, we totally did. <laughs> but it's what's going on and it, anything can happen in our environment. You know, you can't change that. But what you can change is how you respond to that or detach from that emotional trigger. And when we have stress, what's happening is our body and our mind and our cells are remembering a moment in the past that happened that caused us to feel like oh either we were not enough not good enough or we couldn't deal with that um whatever the the story was when we were young that our body and our cell retains that memory of that moment so whenever we're triggered you'll probably notice we're usually triggered by the same same thing over and over again right and some people deal with certain um, situations a lot better than others, but why is it that it could be the exact same situation, but two people can react very differently and it has to do with our, our story, our past. And so going back to what stress is and how oils can help, um, it's about detaching from the emotional charge or trigger that's in our body. And that's where the magic of the oils work. It's able to actually bring us to a moment of presence. And because certain oils, like, you know, when you go into a, a garden of roses and you smell those roses, that aroma, you're either transported somewhere else or you become really zen and, and present to the, the beauty of that aroma there and then. And likewise, that's what the oils do. It brings you to the present moment and you feel good. You feel really blissful in that moment. And the, the, the thing about the brain is it cannot feel two different emotions at the same time, right? So on top of that, like I mentioned earlier, there's vibration and frequency in the oils. So oils work on a biochemical level, but they also work on a vibrational level and they can actually subtly shift that emotional charge and and transmute it and get rid of it out of your body. Um, and I've experienced that firsthand as um, a very stressed out mother running a full-time business. I was like a headless chicken running around, you know. So I don't even recognize the old me anymore. Um, yeah. And the yeah. way that happens is like, I mean, you open the bottle, you smell it within seconds, and this is scientific, the molecules in the bottle or in the oil travel up your nose and straight to the emotional center in your brain, the limbic system, where we hold on to our emotions and our memories. So that's how it starts to um, help us. Yeah. That's mind-blowing. That's absolutely mind-blowing. I mean, it's when you actually think about it, we're always smelling things, we're constantly smelling things. And yeah. I remember reading um, a research study and it was saying something along the lines of that, you know, if you, for example, let's say something amazing happened to you and your mum was baking bread at the same time, you smell yes. that bread, you feel the love. But if at the same time, the same situation, you fell and you hurt yourself and someone was mm -hmm. making bread, you smell that. So now every time you walk past the bakery, you're like, oh, I'm going to fall or you get scared or you get that yes. sympathetic nervous system come up. And like you said, it goes to the limbic system with memories. Like that is absolutely crazy what our brain does. Yeah. Because it's not just our brain, our body. We are everything that happens is for us to stay alive and for us to live as optimal as possible. That's so it's right. It's yeah. an amazing mechanism that our body has to remember to link things with smell. So to, with essential oils, us. you can use it. Yeah, yeah. You can yeah. use it in a positive manner, right? You can. Yeah, you can. And you can also, once that um trigger has been detached. Um, you can then replace that with new positive feelings and emotions or beliefs or affirmations and intentions. So it's possible. Our bodies are amazing. You can actually rewire. That's why we talk about 
the brain being neuroplastic, it actually can rewire the synapses. There's the neural connections can change in your body. So that's what's magical about the oils is it does work below the conscious level. You don't have to work hard at, at um, changing your attitude and beliefs. You don't have to work hard at um, like go and meditate for 20 years in a cave <laughs> to get to that level, right? I mean, you can if you want to. What if you want to. <laughs> you can ask to you if you want to and you can. Um, but, yeah, but what's amazing is I learned this technique to help my clients to get rid of stress and it was created by a doctor who's been a clinical psychologist for over 20 years. And he basically combined psychotherapy practices from his experience together with these oils to help support our body to release deep emotional, um, deep emotional, well, deep emotional release. And then you, through a special 12 step process, we can actually dissolve that for good and then anchor in positive thoughts and intentions and so i mean the tangible results have been amazing for my clients um and it's really super easy but if you want to learn more i'll go into detail i go into detail in our special aroma breath master class where i share my three key secrets super easy though super simple process yeah it is amazing yeah and we'll definitely share that with the audience and I'll put in the show notes how to access that masterclass. That's absolutely amazing. It's extraordinary what um, these oils can do. And the audience that jumped on and is like, I want to listen to this podcast are like, what are these three oils, Audrey and Mahela? Get to it already. (laughs) There are so many oils that help us in that area and you can look it up online there's tons of oils Mm. and different people will recommend different things because our bodies are chemical in nature and the oils are chemical in nature and you never get the same oil if you're getting a pure one it's never the same with each harvest so there's this beautiful um interaction that happens and but my top ones okay i'll get to it (laughs) my top ones is lavender now there are many different species of lavender but the most medicinal species is one called lavandula angustifolia um, and that's been really helpful and used for hundreds and hundreds of years it's used for nervous tension it can really help you with sleepless nights um, and help you release stuck mental energy because when you get rid of that you know you have mental clarity and you can look at life through a new lens right um wow. and, and so it gets have, rid of rid of did you say memories that unwanted memories stuck mental stuck, energy stuck mental Stuckness. energies and that's what makes yeah. you stress right it is because you're in this constant, like like a hamster wheel. You're, yeah. you're going around in circles. Yeah, and 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 there's been a lot of research done into this oil. It's it's one. Of, it's the what do they call that? The Swiss Army knife of essential oils. Um, and researchers in in Germany in 2010 studied the effects of it. I mean, you can find a lot of these papers on PubMed. So I encourage you to check PubMed online for the research that's done on these oils. But it was found to be extremely effective um to calm the nerves um the second I oil it. i love lavender let's just stay on lavender oh, for a second because i yes, absolutely sure. love lavender right it's so funny because i actually have lavender on my bedside table and my dog has been a dog uh, he's been a rescue dog so he's got hardcore anxiety right and it's interesting for some reason something came to me and was like hey put a little bit of lavender so i put mm-hmm. a little tiny bit of lavender oil on him and he's been i call him i call him at night time my lavender dog because when he walks around he just smells like lavender <laughs> <laughs> and it's interesting like you know in, intuitively that's what you go for and that's what yeah. intuitively comes yeah. to you and as soon as you smell it you're like oh you feel at uh, peace that lavender yeah it just has a chemical reaction chemical effect on your body um and animals are very intuitive as well so i've had like birds um that i've rescued and and i'll let them fly around the house they usually fly and land on all my bottles of oil they know the good stuff (laughs) 
<laughs> you know the good stuff. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's a whole other story, though, uh, how to use oils with animals. But, yes, yeah. it can be used very safely with animals for sure. Yeah, that's absolutely amazing. Yeah. I love lavender. Okay, so number one, lavender. And we all know lavender. We've all heard about lavender and we've all probably mm-hmm. smelled lavender before. Yeah. So, so lavandula and gustifolia, that has the broadest action and that's the safest one to use. That's what I like to use. Amazing. Um, and the second one, the king of oils. And I think a lot of people may or may not have heard of this, but it's called frankincense. It's just this little oil that exists. It's been around for a few thousand years. <laughs> um, and it was traded through the Middle East since I think uh, at least 3000 BC. So it was considered more valuable than gold. And I'm sure there was a good reason for that. Um, and the ancient Egyptians also use it. And you'll find it mentioned thousands of times in ancient medical journals in different cultures. But other than the amazing benefits that you can receive from it that are outside of stress, which you can look on PubMed, um, it also helps to deepen your breath. So when we're stressed, we breathe shallow, don't we? Yeah. Or when we're angry or whatever, we get there's this there's this response we have and our breathing becomes very shallow. Um, So this will help you to slow down your breathing breathe deeply and that in the starts to you know break the cycle and you start to become more present yeah Yeah, and less attached to the past yeah so that's bosvelia is that right that one is oh yes just to mention the species that would be boswellia cartery i love boswellia cartery there are other species um boswellia sacra which is from oman um, and a few others but by and far my favorite is boswellia cartery because that was one of my aha moments seven years ago when I had an emergency cesarean with my child. He's 13 now. But I lived with that angry red keloid scar for six years, and I thought there was nothing that I could do to fix it. Um, and lo and behold, Boswellia cartery came into my life. <laughs> Frankie came into my life, and I applied that on the scar, and within a week it was 95% faded. And I was like, holy moly. What yeah. on earth? And when you think about how it's how they make frankincense, it's pretty fascinating. So there's this frankincense tree, and they cut little wounds into the tree and allow the tree to bleed out that sticky resin, which you would find. You know how you go into the woods, you can do that, and there's this this, this stickiness. That is the tree's response to injury. It excretes that resin to protect and seal the wound of the tree. And so there's a lot of clues in nature, signatures in nature that we can learn from. And so they take that resin and they steam distill that to produce the essential oil. So, um, yeah, it's pretty amazing. That is amazing. I love Boswellia in itself as a herb, being a naturopath myself. I love using it as so many amazing properties. And it's such, like you said, with essential oils, it is such an old, ancient medicine. It uh, is. And, and you even said it, it's been used in scriptures. It's been used for years and centuries with, you know, ancient yep. individuals using it. So medical journals, medical pharmacopoeia, ancient pharmacopoeia. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Okay. So we've got one <laughs> lavender, then we've got <laughs> one frankincense. <laughs> yes. And the Third lucky one is? All right. So it's not really, I don't know if you call it an essential oil, but it is very essential. And it's this compound called vanillin. And that's extracted from vanilla beans. And there's this amazing blend that I use that has contains vanillin in it. And we found a way to extract the vanillin that makes it 10 times more potent in your most concentrated natural vanilla extract in existence so it is a science and an art to get that potency but researchers have found that the vanillin um, is able to alleviate in the lab in rats alleviate their depressive symptoms via smell and it helps to actually increase your serotonin and dopamine levels in your brain tissue that's what they discover in rats is that because it reminds us of vanilla cakes (laughs) (laughs) fat rats in the lab <laughs> that's amazing yeah. wow vanilla yeah. beautiful vanilla 
So I love using this special blend that uses the vanilla and extract in it, and I combine all three in the Aroma Freedom technique that I use, and that's something that I love practicing. Yeah. Wow. So lavender, yeah, nice. frankincense, and vanilla. And vanilla, which is the compound found in vanilla beans. Yes. That is amazing. <laughs> and that can help us out with stress if we're stressed out. I can mm, just imagine yeah. people being like, where's the lavender field? I'm going to go jump in there and do little angels in the vanilla field, <laughs> in a vanilla <laughs> and, and lavender and frankincense. Literally. <laughs> yeah, you literally could do that. <laughs> wow, that's absolutely amazing. And I love that all of these have actually also been studied. Uh, they've been used for centuries and then individual scientists decided to look into it and find out how and why it's working and how it's yeah. helping us. Absolutely. I think we've just forgotten. Yeah, <laughs> we have. And so you mix the three together. Is that right? That's right. I love mixing the three together. And um, I've had such amazing results and feedback from people. Um, very profound results where they just feel like they're able to get over that dreaded emotional block that they have so that they can get to the next level wherever they want, yeah. wherever they're going. Yeah. yeah. Talking about you just blocks, want to get right? the next step. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Talking about blocks. Uh, on what level do essential oils work? On a physical block, mental block, spiritual block, emotional block? What block are we talking about? Oh, my gosh. All the blocks. <laughs> so essential oils work on all the levels. I mean, I started using oils thinking, oh, yeah, I'm just going to use it because I want to sm smell good, I want to feel good, and just for, like, physical aches and pains and maybe, you know, um, little mishaps on my son. And that's how it all started. It was started on a, for a physical, at a physical level for me. But within, literally within, I would say, three or four weeks, I started to notice that my mum brain was gone, the brain fog was gone, and my memory was a lot better. And I was like, ooh, this is like a superpower that I have now, right? And then I noticed that I'm a lot, I was a lot more calm as well, a lot more balanced, less in my head, as I mentioned, more present. Um, and you can function more optimally through life when you're less stressed because when you have less cortisol in your body, when you're less stressed, your, your hormones, like I mentioned, are more balanced. And guess what happens as a result of that? which I discovered with my son and myself, we got less sick. We weren't sick as much. And so that was the physical, um, tangible results. I was like, oh, we've not wasted any dollars, you know, for emergency care. We've just been really, really healthy. Um, and then I noticed that I was a lot more, I, I went, and a bit more, I started to learn about that more, a, a lot more about my feelings, dropping into my felt sense, being more aware of what I was feeling, but also looking at it from a third part, third um, externally. I wasn't so much here, but I was looking at, oh, okay, I'm observing that I'm feeling this. Hmm. So then I started to connect more with my emotions. Um, and when you connect more with your emotions and you acknowledge them and process them with the help of the oils, then you're able to just learn what life has to offer rather than feeling like you're a victim of things that happen in your life. Yeah. And then more recently, this year, I felt more alignment with something bigger. So on a spiritual level, it can help as well. But those were the processes that I went through. Yeah. I just got goosebumps everywhere on my body. That's amazing. <laughs> That's that's absolutely, yeah, wow. And to yeah. think that something as simple as essential oils can do that and when you trace back where they come from, plant, mother nature, it's like all of this was designed for us, all of this yeah. was made for us, all of this was, you know, it's it's right in our backyard. Our medicine is. is in our backyard, you know. Uh, and for those people who don't have a backyard, um, it's out there somewhere. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, a hundred percent. So, um, I wanted to, I found this study, um, that, uh, mm -hmm. I thought I wanted to know your, your views on, um, sure. actually, before we get into the study, I wanted to know the big question. A lot of people ask me sometimes about oils and I say, look, I'm not an aromatherapist. I don't know much information. It's best to touch base with an aromatherapist, right? Because, um, 
you mentioned some uh, before you mentioned you know some may be safe for animals some may not be also, even before that you even mentioned some may not be extracted because they may not be um they may be dangerous right so because, anything, yeah not suitable yeah so even like herbs when i use them for naturopathy there are some herbs that mm-hmm. are we can't use right so can you talk to us a little bit about safety and dangers about essential oils so we're a little bit aware of them Absolutely. Now, I get that question a lot. Are essential oils safe to use? Well, that's a resounding yes from me. <laughs> so for the last seven years, I've, you know, I've never felt like my life or my son's life had been endangered by essential oils. <laughs> if anything, they have been enhanced. Um, and I'll tell you a story of my story of hives, right? So before I discovered oils, I used a lot of man-made chemical products in my home. And what I didn't realize was I was being exposed to very dangerous xenochemicals or synthetic chemicals that that a lab put together and 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 it's just found everywhere. It's rampant everywhere. And we don't know the dangers that those have. I mean, there have been so many poisonings um, and so many accidents with these synthetic comp chemicals. And for me, it was my whole body started reacting and broke out in hives because I was walking on the floor that was just mopped with a chemical Wow! that wasn't, yeah, that wasn't safe. And my body had just had enough. So yeah, there were, there were decades that I went through life, not noticing anything and not being, not being affected by them. But one day my body just said, okay, I've had enough of this. And it was full body hives. I was in so much agony that I, could barely drive myself to the doctor's clinic. It was so bad. And it took days and days to recover, even with medication. And so when I discovered the oils, there was this epiphany moment, like, hang on a second. Okay, so I'm getting less sick, you know, because my body is more in balance, more in homeostasis from the essential oils. And then two years passed by and and I thought, oh, this is the longest stretch of time that I've not been sick. And my son's not sick either. And we've not spent a single dollar in emergency care. Um, So that to me was my aha moment. Your immune system becomes so strong with essential oils. So yes, oils are so safe for you. Of course, there are some basic safety information and with a dose of common sense, you can totally use these oils without any fear. And provided that your oils are pure and unadulterated, that means they have not been modified and they have not added anything synthetic added to them, which apparently the deception is massive in the essential oil industry. You know, like with anything, right, you're going to have people jump on the bandwagon and use sophisticated technology to fabricate oils that are really hard to discern from the real thing. So a little bit of research, asking the right questions, knowing and speaking to the source of where your oils come from, speaking to some experts in the field. Um, Feel free to reach out to me. I've been doing research into that. But also just look at where it comes from. Know where the channels are, like what is the process and how did that get into the bottle and how did it get to you? So company transparency. Um, but I know that question comes a lot, up a lot, Mahela, because there are actually articles and blogs and news reports saying that the oils can, you know, there's dangers, you know, it, it can cause harm, but essentially experience for me overrides all those hyped up concerns. Like there is so much information out there, a sea of information, misinformation. And what you'll find is when you do a little bit of digging is that a lot of the stuff that's written and put out there to create fear is sometimes created by industries that want to inflate the dangers and they have um, they have an agenda behind that. So, yeah. Coming I know exactly what you're sleep. talking about, 100%. And, and it's the same... It's the same for herbs. If you're yeah. using the right herb at the right dosage at the right time, prescribed by the mm-hmm. right individual, there shouldn't be an issue. Yeah. If you dabble in and it yourself without knowing what you're kind of doing, is it dangerous? Maybe. 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 Most Maybe. likely if you if you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> but essentially, yeah. you know, um, the thing is, is I love I love that you mentioned 
you know, it has to be pure and that's absolutely key. And that's anything that we put in, even food, yeah. even food yeah. can be dangerous. Food can be linked absolutely. to disease. So if food can be linked to a disease, you know, anything yeah. else can be, but it has to be, that's what you have to know what you're putting on your body, what you're putting in your body. Uh, and and also what you don't want to put in your body, you know, you have to yeah. you have to draw those boundaries and those lines with what's happening inside your body. I also love Absolutely. that you mentioned cleaning products. Absolutely love that. So I just made a little link in my head that with stress, right? A lot of people don't even know the cleaning products that they're using are created unnecessary stress in their body. And then mm, working on their business. Right. So let's say, for example, they're working in an office and that office just got cleaned with. Um, chemicals and they come into that office and they touch the touch the desk they touch their face they smell yeah. all those toxins and they're stressed out because they've got so many clients it's going to add yeah. extra stress on them right so much Absolutely. stress on them so by removing it's- those toxins and adding in essential oils to clean yeah. you're reducing yeah. your stress Exactly, because the chemicals, the compounds that are man-made, it can't be processed by your body very well. Um, and if you get this onslaught of it, because it's all all around us, it's in the air, so eventually your body is not able to cope with the detoxification. So that causes the free radicals is causing that oxidation um, and causing an imbalance in your um, emotions and hormones. It's a vicious cycle. And so... Yeah, totally relevant point there, Mahela. Um, and and I have to add to that. That's why you have to be really careful. A lot of companies, cleaning companies, actually add essential oils to their cleaning um, ingredients. Um, but you'll find most of the time it isn't actually therapeutic pure essential oil. They've just caught it that, and they've created a synthetic version and caught it essential oil or fragrance so that's why a lot of the cleaning stuff has pine in it oh and now it has lemon in it and the thing about our nose is yes it's our best friend but it could also be our worst enemy we can be tricked into believing that because it smells like a flower it's good for us so i implore all your listeners to really look at the ingredients and see what part of it is natural and usually with the word fragrance it means that that one word covers a myriad of um, chemicals that's created in a lab. And if you look up on the internet, there's a lot of articles written on this. Fragrance is is worse than secondhand smoke. Yes. I yeah. was going to add on to that. Fragrance is so dangerous. So if you live in a home or if you work in an office and you go to the bathroom and it has that yeah that oh thing gosh. run <laughs> it's like you know that run. thing run like <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that song no, just like i know get out of there because you yeah. ingesting that is disrupting your hormones it's activating your cortisol yeah. like crazy your body's on yeah. danger the sympathetic nervous system's up because it's like oh my gosh what's happening this smell i don't know what it is i need to run i need to get out of there but if you exactly. stay in there your stress is through the roof exactly and i mean now that i've I mean, the oils do this other thing that's really amazing in a body. It actually facilitates um, getting rid of waste material, things that come up from chemicals that you absorb, but also from your metabolic processes. So it helps to facilitate the um, excretion of toxins. So that's another benefit of it. So now that I've been using it for such a long time, I've essentially really detoxed quite a lot of um, stuff from my body. So even now walking down a cleaning aisle in the supermarket, with my son, we both get headaches from it. So you may not feel it now if you haven't detoxed and removed yourself from that chemical life. It's kind of like you smack your hand constantly, it gets numb and you don't feel it. But once you move away from that, it hits you and you feel it, you know? So it's actually a good thing to be physically aware of it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, That's so true. Uh, Yeah. I don't even go down that aisle. I'm like, no. no, good old vinegar does it for me. Yeah, good old vinegar, yeah. you know, it is absolutely amazing. But it's so interesting because it's become the norm. Because you know mm-hmm. that those those r- smells around us, the fragrances around us, and you know we can even go into further where we can talk about perfumes and and deodorants oh, yeah. and things like yeah. that. It's yes, it might smell nice, but it's most of them 
are chemically made in a lab. So they yeah. they tricked us and then we're ingesting these toxins which are putting more stress on our body because we have to understand yeah. like if we talk about stress in itself, stress isn't just oh I'm stressed out because someone's stressing me out. All of these things, these chemicals which can be yeah. easily alternated with essential oils are causing stress on us, unnecessary stress because we can exchange yeah. them with essential oils, true? Yeah, I mean, especially for women, I mean, perfume, I used to be a huge perfume user and it, I loved it because it evoked that feeling that, oh, that smells good, right? Um, but I didn't realise that that was actually wreaking havoc on my hormones. And that's why there's so much dis-ease now in younger women because they're using a lot of these fragrances and these products on their body. And again, like you said, it, every once one thing is out of balance, everything's out of balance, including stress levels. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. and we and we think we're doing the right thing because it smells nice. We're using our, our nose mm-hmm. and that and that whole system that we can use essential oils for. I know, and and look at the amount of money they spend on marketing fragrances and perfumes. It's such it's it's we look at it as something luxurious, you know, um, and and um, life enhancing and and makes us feel beautiful, but in fact, it's doing the exact opposite. Hundred yeah. percent. It's just making us sick in a sense. So I came across this study, and I wanted to know your thoughts. I guess there's so mm. many studies out there with essential oils, but this yeah. is an interesting one, especially what's happening around the world at the moment. So we know that stress and sleep are directly linked to sleep, right? So I read a study where aromatherapy essential oils reduced anxiety, which is related to stress, increased sleep, which is absolutely amazing when we're stressed, and also stabilized our blood pl- our blood pressure of patients undergoing cardiac stent insertion. So these individuals who've had heart issues, right? So further stating the more research is necessary for it to become a suitable. So essentially this is saying that, you know, they wanted to look at using essential oils as a nursing intervention in practice, right? And yes, the study may be saying, you know, more research needs to be done and stuff like that, but just the thought about using essential oils in a nursing practice as a first aid kit just that whole thought about using essential oils at first aid because it is reducing anxiety it may be you know decreasing our blood pressure it helps with our sleep so even that thing that you're talking about having a first aid kit what are your thoughts on that as it being used as a first aid kit even in in this instance in nursing but even in our home yeah, it's really encouraging to see, you know, research done in that area. And to be honest, a lot of hospitals now in the world, um, in different countries, are actually using oils in um, post-recovery, um, whether that be for emotions or whatever. It is actually being practiced a lot more now. And even in holistic practices, holistic doctors are starting to incorporate the use of Mother Nature as the essential oil um, into their practice. So it's definitely great. Um, There's no shortage of research, to be honest, to support the benefits of essential oils. Uh, It's really interesting to find the, I think there's tens of thousands of research papers out there, if you really look. Um, So it's very encouraging. The reason why I think you mentioned more research is needed, I think that just means like, you know, in terms of the scientific paradigm, it's very, very difficult to control the variables that are found in essential oils. And in the scientific community, what they do with research is they need to have one one compound be constant and everything, or rather, what is it? Everything has to remain constant except the one compound so that you can see the effect of that one compound. But in reality, you can't do that with essential oils. You can't do that with nature because you said that at the start. Nature completely changes. Every bottle, you might get the bottle of of lavender. The next bottle is going to be different. Um, yeah, because love of the, the soil mm, and the climate, everything. Yeah, where it's from, the the source that you said. But exactly. I love the fact that they actually look that research as it being used mm-hmm. as a first aid. I love that, and and they've oh, proven, yeah. like you said, lowers anxiety, lowers blood pressure, helps with sleep. So you know the yeah. three essential oils, Audrey, that you you mentioned, like uh, uh, lavender, frankincense, vanillin. Like these things can help individuals with yeah. their stress. Uh, and it can be used as a first aid kit, um, even if it's at home when you're feeling stressed, at work when you're feeling stressed, yeah. in your car. Yeah. You know, before you're going to do a presentation, you're just like, mm. you know, you yeah. take that in instead like of. 
it, it goes to the root, right? It, it addresses the root cause versus um, treating the symptom, which is not what oils are intended to do. Um, and, and most illness and disease actually come from our emotions, which is pretty shocking, right? So now you just opened have... up a can of worms. Now you just opened up a whole <laughs> new episode right there. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I can go on and on about that. Because emotion and thoughts and beliefs carry a vibrational energy. And when that is um, that energetic vibration that we have, because everything's energy, everything has a vibration. When that is um, resonating low, vibrating, oscillating low, then it's going to impact and manifest into the physical form. So that's why we got to address it at the root, at the emotional level. Mm, yeah. I love that. I love that. So individuals now that have listened to this podcast are like, Audrey, I love everything you've spoken about. I love those three essential oils. And they're, you know, the person that's listening is like, I am so stressed out of my business. I'm so stressed out of my personal life. As soon as I wake up, I have anxiety. Uh, I, I have issues sleeping. Um, my mm-hmm. stress is through the roof with everything, home life, business. What do I do? So what would be some practical tips for this individual to, right. to even to use aromatherapy or what would be some practical tips that they can do? to incorporate yep. essential oils. Okay, it's really hard, Mahela. You open the lid and you smell. <laughs> That's how I started. So again, like going back to the whole how fast the molecules move to your limbic brain, smell the oils, put it in a diffuser. You're going to have amazing sleep is what I felt when I started using in the diffuser. I slept so, so soundly that when I woke up, I was so rested um, and I was able to tackle my day a lot better because how you start your day determines everything, right? Um, that's one way. It's, it's, it's doing that because it helps to calm your nervous system. It helps you to get better sleep. And then also I would say, obviously you have to use it in conjunction with other lifestyle modifications. So it's no point if you have a, um, a cupboard full of chemical cleaners and you have a very high, highly strong work, you know, hours and you don't take time out for yourself. Um, it's really important to take time out for yourself and to block out me time, you know. So you have to have um, a balance. You have to look at your lifestyle as a whole um, before you start expecting any results with the oils. But the best way is just open it and smell it. Um, have a bath with it with some Epsom salt or a foot bath even if you don't have a bathtub. Put it in your foot bath and you would absorb those molecules through your feet. Um I love using them together with breath work and with um, meditation. It really helps to center me, calm me, ground me, and stay really present in the moment. But, yeah, it's super easy. It's not complicated. And if you can't get oils, just go out into the woods or go to your peppermint bush or lavender bush. (laughs) I actually do have lavender too, which is amazing. I've got lavender also. I mean, everyone should have lavender in their garden. Absolutely amazing for the bees for everything but yes. I love I love those practical tips as simple as opening the bottle and smelling it it's non-invasive it's it's no. simple it's easy I, I love I love I love those practical tips look Audrey to as this is the natural health podcast uh, I ask all my guests what mm. is your best kept natural health hack you know something that you may do every day once a year but it's something that really gets you to optimal health exactly what you said at the start of the episode what optimal health and success is for you what's something that you do that assists you link to that yeah i mean i have to say the number one thing for biohacking my health are the essential oils that i've incorporated every single day because they do interact with our cells and our blood and everything our focus and that's really helped me to face the challenges ahead in my day. I mean, my life's not perfect and there's a lot of stresses, but I just can't imagine life without them. They've really helped me. Um, Frankincense, like I mentioned earlier, King of Oils, that has helped me take a a number of years off my face (laughs) for a healthy glow. Cleopatra used to use it, so it must be good. Um, The other thing is, You know, I love saying every day with oils and with my intention, I love to say, hmm, I can't wait for my surprise gift today. So having, yeah, just having an attitude of gratitude and um, curiosity and opening up 
the possibilities of, hey, I'm going to look out for a surprise gift. And whenever I do that, something really, something surprising pops up in my life. And it can be as simple as, you know, seeing a rainbow or a bird flying into my garden. So you tend to start looking for the miracles in your everyday life. And that puts a big smile on my face. Um, so again, that comes back to nature, right? Yeah. Um, that's yeah. So and, and one more, one more self-love, self-love. We are so worthy guys. We are worthy of good health. We're worthy of happiness. We are worthy of all the good things that life has to offer. So that's really helped me. Um, yeah, be healthy. Wow, that's that's <laughs> that's deep and beautiful. I love that you shared that with us. That's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, self love. Wow, yeah. there you go. A new episode that we can do self love and essential oils, and then we can even go into the absolutely. freedom technique that you use and, and all of those things. We definitely need a follow up episode from this one. I would but love I thought- that. I start this episode just for individuals to get an introduction of aromatherapy because, and also with stress because we're all stressed. And then, you know, hearing those three essential oils next time they think stress and essential oils, lavender will come Mm -hmm. into their head, frankincense will come into their head and vanilla will come in their head. And they're like, I need to get those and smell them, right? Even if they're walking somewhere and they see some lavender, they'll put their head in the lavender and start smelling it. (laughs) Even if it's in your neighbor's garden, just go for it. (laughs) It's like, I'm a little bit stressed out. I'm just going to be here for five minutes. I love that. No, that's absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us, Audrey. I really appreciate it. I'm going to put in the show notes the link to your um, masterclass. I'm also going to put in links of how people are able to access you, find you on Instagram, on your website, and so forth. Uh, Is there anything else that you want to say before we clock off here? Uh Yeah, but thank you for sharing that and have me on here. It's been an absolute pleasure. And um, if people, the listeners, if you want to uh, hop onto our website, we do offer uh, free masterclasses and mystery classes as well as free breath work to help with stress levels. And so we're constantly endeavoring to um, create new and fun programs for you. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity, Mahela. I've had so much fun. Thank you so much, Audrey. (laughs) Thank you for joining us on Natural Health Podcast. And remember, the missing link between failure and success is your health. The content and information provided here is opinion of Mahela Raguse and is for information purposes only and does not constitute medical advice. It is not intended to provide medical advice or take the place of medical advice or any current treatment you're undertaking. Consult your own medical professionals for any medical issues that you may be having. This entire disclaimer also applies to any guests or contributors to the Natural Health Podcast. It is advised that you consult your doctor or healthcare professional in relation to any health concerns you may be having. Mahela Raguse does not take responsibility for any health consequences which occur from a person listening, viewing, or reading this content. And in a circumstances shall the natural podcast Mahela Raguse any guests or contributors to the natural podcast or any employees associates or affiliates of Mahela Raguse be responsible for damages arising from the information provided on the natural podcast by listening to this podcast you agree not to use this podcast as medical advice to treat any medical conditions in either yourself or others please note if you're taking prescription do not stop your medication or start a new protocol including but not limited to supplements diet lifestyle changes without consulting a doctor or healthcare professional. If you or any person has a medical concern, you should consult with your healthcare provider or seek other professional medical advice. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something that you have read or heard on the natural podcast or in any linked materials. If you think you may have a medical emergency, call your doctor or emergency services immediately. Neither Mahela Raguse nor the publisher of this contact takes responsibility for the possible health consequences of any person or persons reading or listening or following the information in educational content.